We are recording. Big Dick Energy with Trey Carney. Whoa. Whoa. Okay. Medium Dick Energy. Okay. An acceptable yeah. amount of dick. Yeah. She's not going to, it's not going to make or break her life, but she's not going to leave you. So I don't need that kind of pressure in the morning. Adequate. It's only- <laughs> yeah. It's, it's morning time for you. you. I don't know why I'm saying that. I woke up like an hour and a half ago. <laughs> it's, yeah. Um, yeah, dude, I'm, yeah, it's, I'm, I'm a bitch. Wait, wait, did I start recording? I think I did. I think we're recording. Whatever. Episode 176, 2 or 3 p.m. Eastern Time, 2020. It's August 35th. You are in Hawaii. Or yep. September 4th, 5th, 4th, 5th, whatever. September 4th. I've, uh, I, started, I started building. Do you know what NORAD is? The North American Defense. It's yeah, yeah. That's Diane awesome. Mountain, the big nuclear bunker where, like, it's like it'd be like the OG like nuclear Armageddon bunker. I feel like I only know it as a buzzword, like uh, yeah, probably like DARPA or no, you know sure, what I mean? Sure, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, it's NORAD. It's just it's been around since the fifties. Like it's been in the Simpsons. Like I, uh, well, I, I, I dropped my ten terabyte hard drive last week off my off this desk, but I caught it on my foot, just reflexes, like in my shin. It kind of like slowed yeah. it down. I didn't think anything of it. I picked it up, and in that moment, I, it just kind of dawned on me that this is episode 176. Granted, this was like a week ago. So we'll say 170 episodes. Okay. Each episode, it's like, all right, I got to have a full night's sleep before I do an episode. So I'm like ready. I got to meditate. I got to exercise. A lot of these guests aren't friends like you that I can just reach out. They're got people I got to find. A yes. lot of them are people that I can have one time because they're yes. busy individuals. They're grown ass successful men. And even then, the conversations are candid. You can't redo it, right? right it's right. not you write music. You you know the rap. You can write it down again. It'd be a bitch if you lost it. You could write right, it down again. Right, right. And I was like, man, this is definitely like my livelihood. Granted, it's not making any money yet, but I was like, this is definitely like the thing I'm trying to make work. And um, <laughs> gotta take some of these But are you um, keeping all of them on your hard drive? Is that what you're insinuating? Yeah. Well, I do. Well, I have three hard drives. Right, right. One of them is like shockproof. The other two are like Walmart brand. Sure. And uh, I was like, it just kind of hit me right there. I was like, man, how much of a bitch would that be if I just like lost it all? And I was like, granted, and I was looking at them and I was like, I I didn't realize just how fragile hard drives were. I just never, I'm very careful with them. But I looked up, apparently even putting your hard drive in a shopping cart and pushing it through the parking lot from like where you bought it to your car can ruin it interesting the little like needle it almost looks like a it almost looks like an old like um like turntable the needle on the disc it's if you get solid state that doesn't right. have that appear but that's like 10 times more expensive but just right. you're run of the mill go get your external hard drive you're going back to college this fall yep. whatever yeah i was like damn so i looked up some like shockproof waterproof fireproof uh or no shockproof waterproof hard drives on amazon and it's like a normal five terabyte is like I don't know, maybe fifty bucks. These are like hundred bucks for five terabytes. There's a there's a purpose to this story, and uh, so I was like, man, I like. I was like, okay, so I ordered I ordered two of those, and I was like, one is none, two is one, and then I was like, I found these like waterproof, fireproof bags that you're supposed to put money in if you own a business. Okay. And I was like, okay, well, if that has a rating of thirty minutes underwater or thirty minutes in fire, and so does the hard drive, well, there's sixty minutes. It takes one to get to the other. Next week, I'm going to go buy a, a small, like, one cubic foot fireproof safe <laughs> to put them in. Shockproof, waterproof. So I'm putting three tiers of shockproof, waterproof, fireproof. And then I even found these little bags called Faraday bags. And it's for, pe- it's for law enforcement officers that can't be being tracked if they're, like, sure. undercover. Sure. But they sell them. But they're also rated against EMPs. So I'm going to okay. protect my hard drives against uh, solar flares and EMP blasts as well. I feel like you were like scarred, like you were traumatized. Did something happen to it when you dropped it or you just like had this realization? Well, one of the files got corru- one of the files got scratched. It's like an audio file of one of the early episodes, which I can just re-download from online because I also got it online. Sure. But I was sure. just like, there's no point in me going balls to the walls doing this podcast if, if, not, if they're going to go away. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. It's, so I was like, fuck, I'm going to invest like a decent amount of money, three, four hundred dollars. and I'm going to build NORAD. So I'm building my own thing that will be protected against fire, water, dust, shock, and EMP blasts. Dude, that's just fun to shop for too. I got mine here. This is my five gig. Yeah, yeah, um, it's fun. 
it's fun. I have so many movies on here, allegedly. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, I would be so sad if it's uh, a lot of homework. I do back up my computer. I mean, that's the main reason, but it's four terabytes. I mean, that just scratches the surface, right? It's yeah. like, yeah. Well, that's what I was, yeah. So, 10 gigs of homework or something like yeah. this. Yeah. So that's what I was looking at. I was like, man, I'm going <laughs> to do that. So I'm going to start building NORAD. I'm not sure why I told, I think you're just the first guest I've had since I had this idea. And so now I just need to like tell someone. Anyway. I like it, man. So did you watch, you watch that video? Simon? Did, Pretty interesting. A lot of, I mean, a lot of artistic uh, freedom with it. I might've seen it before. It seems so familiar, but maybe it just the concept in general. Like I think I've seen some videos by maybe Vsauce or um, mm -hmm. Veritasium that did like, you know, the, the, the science-y explaining it a little bit version of those videos, with, especially with the plates in the sand, right? Uh -huh. But he had lots of different things going on. I liked it, right? So the um, the water one with the kick drum. That was weird. That one, like, is my favorite somehow. That's like the laminar flow where it looks like the water's floating in midair. Yeah, but it's really that? just the flow. It's yeah. so smooth. It's like the, op the opposite of turbulence, right? Where yeah. there's no no change as the water's coming out. So it seems as if it's frozen. Um, obviously, he had, like, the the not the tesla coil is that what it's called the... yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Tesla coil so like you know the that one that one wasn't as interesting to me I've seen right it. yeah the, yeah yeah the changing of like the sand on the plates yes so and the water on the speaker too it's weird it's almost like if you don't think about how sound works in general that it's almost overwhelmingly mind-blowing but then if you try to think about any sort yeah. of sound yeah. Then it starts freaking you out on the same level and you're like okay i guess these plates aren't so weird yeah 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 so I texted you like a week ago or like two weeks ago. I had some like brain lightning at like three in the morning. Mm. And I, I normally like write down ideas, but I was like, I want to talk to Trey about this. So I just sent you some weird cryptic text about like, but it reminded me. Um, so have you ever seen those like, uh, they're like, they're like MRI, they're like GIFs. They're like little like five second videos, but it's like a compilation of like, um, like, like an MRI, so it's like cross sections of like the the MRI will like look at like a banana vertically. Like they, sure, they sure. five years ago they're on like Reddit a lot. People were doing them, or people that had MRI machines. Yeah, they're like probing the cross sections as they go yeah. down. Right? Yeah, and then they but they do them really, and but then they'll they'll run them all in sequence. So it's like yeah. a, almost like a flip book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so you look at it, and it like you know you got the big negative space, and then it's whatever. It's all the weird fractal shit of, and that's another episode for another time. But just that in general. So you look at it and like you know rationally, you're like, okay, I know these are all just tr cross sections. But right. I was like, how I'm viewing it as this video is like this shape that's just like moving and like mm. altering. And that got me thinking about cymatics, about like shapes are doing right, and the sand it's doing these weird almost pulsings. Mm -hmm. So what if you like worked backwards? What if like, so a thing I got going is like, what if like sounds, not like one second sounds, but almost like clips, you know, like a, a hook or a riff or a bass drop, be like at least a couple seconds long. So if we look at all, so we look at the pulsing banana, right? Yes. We know it's slices of banana. We know that those slices of banana are from an MRI machine. We know the MRI machine is looking at a three dimensional banana. If it was on an Xbox stroller, it would be its own shape. But we right, would know right. the thing we're looking at is relating to this mm -hmm. real thing. Cymatics, we're seeing the cool pulsing. Like, what if we worked backwards? What if those are all cross sections of, I mean, you could say they are cross sections, right? Three seconds of bomb, bomb, bomb. It does the mm -hmm. weird starfish, pentagram, whatever. I see. Do you so like, you want to kind of take the, the two-dimensional yeah. sand picture and as the song plays, you're sort of stacking them in a way where you're making this composite three-dimensional object. Does sound have shape? Can sounds have shapes? I think it already does with the two-dimensional, but the thing that you're saying is even cooler that somehow there might be something illuminating or insightful about doing it that way. Yeah. Like if it has this repeating pattern, it's like four balls and then one big ball with some lines. And yeah. then there's this, you know, yeah, that, that's, that's interesting. What if you could model? It reminds me of like dimensions, right? Like yeah. The, yeah. The, the idea being that 
the only way to try to understand fourth dimensions or, or one of the ways is to think of instead two dimensions and think of a, like a basketball passing through the two dimensions, right? And it's exactly what you say, that it's like checking each layer at once. The, the minute it makes contact with the page, right? The basketball is just a little point on the page, right? Then it's a emanating circle that is the biggest when it reaches the, uh, you know, the center of the ball and then goes back to a point. So somehow if you can picture that in 3D and they kind of touch on this in that movie uh, Interstellar, right? Yeah. is like if you imagine that from a fourth dimensional it would be a basketball appearing so it would be this little creepy ball that just appeared in your room and it would yeah Ooh. grow to the size of a large ball and then it would shrink and that would be like a four-dimensional sphere yeah passing through your room and that's basically like the extent to which any of us i feel like can really truly yeah visualize 4d right so what if so what if sounds what if they're just whole like we have like right we have colors we got like red green blue right yeah but what can you make with red, green, blue? You can make pixels. And what can pixels make? Oh, Any pixels. image. You yeah. can have a picture of Yosemite or you can have a picture of you and me talking. Or you, anything. You can have porn, anime. It doesn't matter, right? I wonder if they mark- could 3D print what you're saying. It seems like maybe they could do that. So, but what I'm saying is so you can take this simple thing and create yes. anything. So simple sounds, we, we just have our, our, our snapshot. Burr, the sand makes a weird, like, mantle mm. prop thing or whatever or block triangle whatever but just like rgb now yeah. you're combining those so like it would almost it would start to become like like in the like fingerprints there'd be like very specific three-dimensional shapes so like even words me saying like titty fuck like right. that would be a a unique three-dimensional shape and then bass drops, guitar solos, like, but then you could go even further. Whole songs could have unique, weird psychedelic shapes like Stairway to Heaven or Rap God or whatever, right? right. It would, Body Unbelievable by Trey Carney. But it would just be, they would all have unique three-dimensional shapes. Right. I don't know why, that's just got my mind spinning. Like we can't see. Yeah, yeah. Well, what's weird is they do do that. I think it's like almost borderline an open problem, but with just language. So that shows you how complicated it is that just with language, like linguistically, you know, they've studied and tried to break down, I think they're called like phonomes or something like this, right? Like titty fuck, like you said, is going to be 12 phonomes changed together. And they like study the tongue and the air and the voice box, all these crazy things. And they could make like a poster that you could hang on your wall. It'd be like the periodic table of like little sounds and you string them together. But even that is a little weird because across cultures, there's some that some languages would use and then others that would be not even in that language. So they might need to do it for all of the languages. And then you're still only at languages. So, right, is there some sounds that transcend language? Mm -hmm. Are we mimicking the sounds we hear when we do voices? That's interesting to think about too, right? Like when we were developing speech, whatever it was, millions of years ago, maybe, are they kind of impersonating things? Like where do, where does the origin of the, like a ta 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 sound, like you kind of hear a ta ta ta, you know, are they kind of doing impressions of, of things or, or somehow it comes from within, you know? Yeah. Is it just a reference point? Is it, is it yeah, is it rocks clicking? Yeah, right. Did they just go around like making the noises yeah. of shit they heard until they had a water? Or, Whap, right? Yeah. yeah. What is it something is it you know you see water sizzling off a forest fire it's like right what? yeah or, yeah or are we just make did we make our own noises just as arbitrary reference points but what i'm thinking is even if you could do all of those that would still only be a subset there would still be like weird sounds that like could have some shape and could be in a song that would yeah. not See, be a human like a xylophone noise you can't make that i mean aside from like a beatbox but like yeah, yeah there would yeah. be a lot that we can't even make and then yeah then you'd have like pitches that you can't hear but I remember hearing Duncan Trussell say this years ago, and now it's kind of floating in. He's like, they were talking about cymatics. Mm. And he was like, what if that's why different songs give you different feelings? A sad mm. song versus a, a jacked up song. What if it's causing like cymatics to happen in like the level of like the neurochemicals in your brain? It's causing mm. circles and shapes. And that's what gives you, so you listen to, you know, like, thunderstruck and it's like the beginning of like a war movie like right or it's like a slow sad song or some just some trippy comfortably numb pink floyd 
Mm. What if that is actually inducing? Because, I mean, it's a very real thing where you listen to a song and it gives you a very specific feeling. Yes. But even that, it's not universal because a sad song for you might be a song that I heard on my first date. And it's always, right. it, that's our song, right? That might right. be the song that was on the radio when you found out, you know, right. whatever, your brother died, right? And it's like, fuck. But it seems like there was like, yeah. And then like, I don't know. Could that be, could that be something? Is it? And then if sand can be shaped into these weird things, uh-huh. how complex could you get? Could you start making like the three dimensional shapes with like sand and shit? Like, what about, I don't know, like a, like a rock or a star? Like, are those just manifestations of some like eternal universal sound? And the matter is just obeying that. Are you and I really complex shape? Because technically we are a shape, right? It's, I mean, infinitely complex with infinite edges, but not infinite, but are we just shapes? Are we just, I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this, but it's starting to, tw- I needed to have you on to talk to you about this because everyone else is like, what the fuck is wrong with you, man? So. No, I like it, bro. Speculation with a grain of like real science. That's the yeah, funny shit. Just that's what dash. we do best, bro. Yeah, just a dash of, just a dash of reality. Just a dash, not too much. Don't not ruin too it. Much. Don't ruin it. You got to go big dick in it. Just, so another thing I was watching yesterday is um, I was rewatching clips from Bob Lazar on Rogan. Okay. And, uh, specifically, the, yeah, the one thing that stuck out to me, and they made it into like a, a JRE clip, is him talking about it being part of an archaeological dig. Mm. I, like I've heard it before, and it was like cool. Heard, but I, there's something about I heard it last night for the first time since like last summer. Yeah. And I don't know. It just kind of hit me a little harder. But the way he said it, he was like, yeah, apparently it's old. He's like, it's not old, it's ancient. Yeah, that's like way scarier for some reason, that's, right? Yeah, that's like terrifying. It's like, it's like Egyptian shit. It was like, it's been here for like thousands of years. They've already been fucking with us for so long, you know? Like what it, but what if that's real? Like, what if that was, like, Rogan's like, yeah, you got two guys with like brushes trying to find a T-Rex and then you hit like smooth metal? Yeah, that would be crazy, dude. My favorite one by far is Sphere. Have you seen or read Sphere? Do you no. know that movie? No. You know another one? No. Oh, you got to check this out. Okay. It's like, um, it's a classic, like, almost gets made fun of, like, um, like Rick Sanchez, you son of a bitch, like a team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sphere, yeah. You know? Where it's like a team of, like, scientists and, like, mathematicians. It's like a, a physicist and, like, a math guy and, like, a, like a psychologist and whatever, whatever. Right, and they right, find right, Sphere. Yeah. They find this three-dimensional, weird, like, liquid metal sphere at the bottom of the ocean. And they're like, what the fuck is this? And they're, like, doing tests on it, trying to figure out what it is. And it starts, like, exerting forces on them. Like, it starts interacting with the people, like, causing them to go crazy and shit. And it's, like, it's like basically an alien movie with no aliens. It's just this whole time. They're just, like, freaking out exactly what you said. Like, if you, in, in some sort of, like, it's been buried. Like, this has been here. You know what I mean? Like, this is like, we like uncovered this, unearthed it. And it's this alien object. And we know it's not us because it's like a sphere that's huge. And it's like the precision of the sphere is beyond anything that we could machine. It's like Michelangelo would jizz off to the level of this sphere. And they're all just like, what? And it's like, just like a alien trippy movie where there's no aliens. And you're like, this is so like exactly what I'm thinking about when I think about these archaeological digs or Indiana Jones tried to do it with the fourth one. Yeah. Kind of shitty. But yeah. they kind of try to do the same thing, right? Yeah, it's it starts to you you've watched all the Rogans, so you you remember the one with Commander Fravor? All the Rogans. Actually, I stopped watching all the Rogans. That was a true thing. I told you. I don't know if yeah, I saw yeah, that. Yeah, one. no, no, yeah, no, we're you, boycotting the you, Spotify boycott. Workers but it's more so that I literally watched every episode for like about twelve hundred in a row. So it's more of a, a well, time. Yeah. Thing. Well, you told me you stopped, but I wasn't sure if I believed you because yeah, I, no, I know. No, I know I OCD to. personally, and I'm like, I don't know if I believe him because I can't break my OCD habits that easy. <laughs> the, the key is I unsubscribe, and then I just have to download them all individually. So it, it's like kind of stupid when you feel like you're unsubscribed, but you're still downloading most of the episodes, you know? Okay. But okay. there's still that one in like 10 chance where it'll be like, I don't know if I want this guy, and it'll prevent me from downloading it. So like I'll skip every once in a while, you know? Do you think, it's, do you think the Spotify move is the death? I don't know. I, I, I'm so anti Spotify in general, but I know so many people who are so pro Spotify that I can't really answer it. it fairly. You know, I've never used it in my life. I think my podcast is on it, but I've never used it. Right. 
my thing is I still consume music at the level of like the album. So like, I still hate the whole like radio, like one off, like this song is my single. I, I refuse pretty much. I mean, someone will show me a song and I'll like put it on repeat, but in terms of my own philosophy about it, if I start liking an artist or liking a song, then I'm almost guaranteed to download the album and try to like listen through the whole thing. I'm just old school like that, right? Yeah, so that's, that's how I am with Post Malone. I'm like, <laughs> I go through like eras. I'm like, I like this song. I will now go into listen to all of his albums nonstop for four months. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, yeah I've never had any. Yeah, dude. I mean, I'm. I, I live in like 1990 technologically. Like I, I I'm just yeah. I've never it's had some things, Spotify. right? It's some things. Yeah, it's. Except with NORAD, my NORAD hard drive. So it's not like you have to pay for it, right? There will be ads. There will be interrupting ads. Ads every three minutes is what I heard. Every three minutes? 180 seconds for a three-hour podcast. Every three minutes, there's a 30-second ad. Fact check me. I could be wrong. But to me, that is... You answered your own question right there. That is rape. rape. You are raping this thing. Yeah, that... I think that's rape and raping it. They've scalped it. They've jizzed on its open brain. It's so funny, too, because he was such a preacher of, like, no interruptions for so long. That's his thing during movies. He's like, you can't be watching a movie and be interrupt, but interrupted by, like, a J.C. Penney commercial. Yeah. So, but then it comes down to is, does every man have his price? Yeah, you know, I mean, even money if I was Yeah. I was talking to my mom, and she was like, what if you were, at, what if you were given $100 million? And I was like, I would sell out tomorrow. I would what's the worst that would happen like he loses an audience he probably fucking wants that bro he's probably sick of all these people that's what i was thinking him. that's what i was thinking i was like i think rogan is i was like i think he knows what he's doing i think he's like does like street smart and book smart i think he's like pop culture smart he's mm-hmm. been in it forever and i think he knows nothing lasts forever not howard mm-hmm. stern not mtv not the mm-hmm. beatles so it's you gotta all... make money when you can so it's like he made money on youtube and uh but now it's like Yo, I've got, like, you're, he's, like, hitting, like, a, a peak. I mean, knock on wood, maybe he goes farther. It's probably, like, $100 million. Like, who cares if people think I sell out? Who cares if I sell out? Cash right. out while you can. Yeah. And in his and mind, he's going to do the same thing, right? He's yeah. not worried about it because he knows from his end, the podcast will be the same. Yeah. And that they're just putting their fuckery bells and whistles on top, but he can more or less just ignore that, you know? But for him, it's still the same life. I get to talk to my friends and do whatever. Yeah. yeah. And maybe it's like a graceful exit. People are going to start fucking hating it, say it's commercialized and leave. And then, because if you just drop off the face of the planet, that's not real privacy. Because everyone's like, where'd you go? Right? Like Chappelle. Versus right. if you sell out, people are like, oh, he's they, sell they, out. They, right, they cut they, you off. Right? Yeah. To, that might be the golden parachute, man. This might, he might be like, he, he might be knowing exactly what he's doing. Just like, I mean, he's in his 50s. He's like, man, I just, $100 million, just generational wealth. We can yeah. go anywhere with my wife, my kids, my kids' kids. Yep. Do meaningful philanthropy. And yeah, you know, get over this thing. He used to say he wants to do it forever. He's like, you know, I'm, I'm finished. I did. I did the podcast thing and whatever. I think he I, will keep doing it for a long time, but it is interesting yeah. to think about how it will affect. I, I, I don't see myself like getting Spotify just to no. do that. You know no. what I mean? Like it's, it's I think but it's, then it's gonna be weird because there'll be some that I'll want to listen to so bad, like a random, you know, if it's like a random certain guest. Yeah, but you know what? I think I'll be able to find it anywhere. We could yeah, download you know, anything we wanted on LimeWire and Napster. I know, right? With millennium changed. I'm not looking at this as a barrier. I know, right? So, but even then, man, like, it's really not a problem for me. I, I, I don't even want to get into the alleged uh, things that I may or may not be able to find on the internet. You know, exactly. Like, uh, exactly. Yeah. But there's like a whole like, I don't know. It's like, I, like I'm I was I'm a bitch. I was upset when he left the first studio. I feel like there's a just certain from like nostalgia or like yeah. I feel like there's a certain almost like like Fenway Park in, in right. Austin. It's been there since 1912. I've been there. It's a shitty stadium. I love the Red Sox. It's a shitty. St- it was it opened I think a week after the Titanic sank. Like right. yo, it's a shitty place. Yeah, but there's an there's a, in but it's awesome. There's, there's an yeah, there's an irreplaceable magic, right? It's like yeah, it's like a skillet that's been in the family for fifty years. If there's right. something about the eggs, it's just a skillet. Yeah, yeah. He left the first studio. I was just like, what are you doing? No, but now he's leaving the second one too, and I'm now it's, now I just feel like I'm like okay, now it's just I don't know. And the second one was the right. compound, right? And it wasn't like it didn't feel like he was there that long. You it didn't know, feel like homey. 
right? Didn't feel, I don't know. Maybe I was I'm still mad that he never like showed his place. There was one video that was like from a UFC fighter. I'll try to send, I'll try to find it and send it to you after this. He was uh, where you can kind of see the inside, you know? He never did a walkthrough. He never did a walkthrough, never did a tour, wanted to keep his privacy, it wasn't about that. But like some, like it might've been, uh, I think it was Kamaru Usman, like when he did the pod. And, you know, his manager came, but I don't think spoke on the pod. So he's like, his, there's like you know, sometimes there's like people who are there that aren't on the show that are like still kind of in the place. So I think that was like this weird opportunity where they got some footage and like probably Rogan wouldn't do it, but also wouldn't care so much if you did it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like, ah, yeah, you can put that up. And so like, yeah. there's this one like weird video that's not even affiliated with the JRE page where yeah. you can kind of see like more shit than you could otherwise. Yeah. I mean, you, there's, like, some pic, – like, most pictures with guests are, like, in, like, in front of that, like, weird wolf thing or, like, in front yeah. of the flag. But there are pictures of other people where it's at a different angle. And you can, like, see down sure. a hall or something. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't know. May, maybe I'm just a purist. Maybe I'm just some, like, hipster faggot. But, like, I don't know. There's something about, like – I don't know. There's, like, an original, like, homey – Yeah, I feel you. Feel to, you know, there's, like, a Fenway Park feel. And now it's, like – now it's like a 2020 stadium. Like, yeah, I mean, the new stadium yeah. will be awesome. Right. It will be awesome. But at the same time, there's like a certain special, I don't know. You know what Yo, I mean? Yo, I love the uh, the Katana or Boring Company flamethrower picks. Yeah. yeah. Like yeah. when he didn't stick to that, I was so sad. Like that was like my favorite little Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like let little... the guests pick between your weapons of yeah, the zombie yeah. apocalypse and take the picture. Yeah. But there's something else about like one studio is it's like – I don't know. Again, it's like the skillet. There's like a certain marination of like, yeah. when you look at any one episode, it's like that's the episode that Elon Musk smoked pot in, that oh, Bernie yeah. Sanders was in. Yes. Whoever, SEAL Team Six guys were in. Yeah. Post Malone. But when it's moving around and it's dancing around, it, I don't know. It starts to get this like, I don't know. It's like a small hole in the wall restaurant that turns into a chain. Like, yeah. I get it from the owner's standpoint. They're cashing out. They're cashing out. I would do the yeah. same thing but there's something that's just not as met. It's Fenway Park going to a brand new, like, Superdome, right? Yeah. It's just, I don't know. And I mean, and I'll be a complete hypocrite. If I get offered that money, You'll I'll be it. sitting here with like, a, with, like, a Walmart shirt with, like, a picture of a Ford in the background. I'll be like, this episode brought to you by Crest Toothpaste. Well, you know, like, I'll do it. What I hope he does, I hope, how, how long is the contract for? I think... Yeah, that's a good question. I think I remember reading that it was some number of years. Yeah, it is. It is. Two, two years immediately or something like this. I would love for him to take that money and create like a YouTube platform type thing. A platform. It's, of just, that, he doesn't know, need the Spotify. That's why, that's what's fucking mind blowing about it, right? It's not that he took the money. It's that he's so always preaching like you don't need anyone fucking with you. Like he believes exactly. in the power of the internet. You know what I mean? Like that's what. Yeah. <laughs> it's not that I it'll. I'm afraid it'll change, or that I'm mad he made money, or that even that it's it's just like philosophically. Yeah. It feels like he could, like you said, like why didn't he make his own Spotify? Right. Joe Joe Rogan launches his own streaming service of podcasts. Joe it's Joey Diaz, Duncan Trussell, Tom Segura, Burt Cry. It's, it's over. Very he already true. won. He already oh, is like oh, the next over. biggest thing, right? Have on Elon, get on Pootie Pie. It's over. Game over. I think it's a tactical move. I like to think, maybe he's maybe I'm trying to make him out smarter than he is. I'd like to think that he's going to Spotify and he's like a tick. He's going to learn hundred million dollars. Absorb. hundred million dollars. Just get that revenue. Yeah. Then, boom makes Joe tube or whatever. And it's yeah, just, yeah, yeah. that's what I like to think. I, I hope I hope because I mean a hundred million dollars. That's a, it, it's a hundred possible. Million. It really does. It does. Because I didn't know this. Did you know YouTube is not financially, it is not profitable. Google runs it at a loss every year, but there's I'm so much more suspicious of these things though. I, I understand what you're saying. It might be true. I think under the umbrella of alphabet, yeah, yeah, yeah. Profitable. It's like, because they can push anything you want. You can push any political narrative you want. You can push any, you want your fucking, you want your thing trending. You want right. the Tonight Show trending. So I think it's, yeah, I'm, I think it's not profitable in like the sense that like, there's like Hollywood movies that are all, they're all unprofitable, but they still make $400 million. You know what I mean? 
Well, what, what I think something. is that you're probably right that on the books, it's not profitable and they are seeing it as like something they can use to influence the world and kind of like on the back end oh, help them. But even yeah. that might be a cooking of the books, right? For tax reasons. Like I know like there's like all these stories like FIFA, like the f fucking yeah, yeah, soccer yeah. or even Amazon, yeah. right? Like you like schedule and arrange your books so that it looks like you're not making That's so much good. money so that you don't have to pay as much taxes and you're just piping it all back into the system. So I, I'm a little skeptical of the yeah. idea that YouTube isn't making them money, but it might be true that it really, either it's a cooking of the books or it really is just that. Think about how much that would cost to operate, right? All those thousands of billions of videos on all the time. That's what I'm saying. So all it could just servers. be the data center. Just having yeah. it run is is bleeding them. Not even one data center. They have, they have so many redundancies. Think about the power and then think about the cooling. Think about how hot that shit's getting. Right. Service. Think about all like the legal implications. Think about everything. They're keeping it good. They're running an operate. This thing is a goddamn like Manhattan project operation. Sure, sure. I think it has profit and like maybe let's say let's say they're not cooking the books and let's say it is like financially it is not profitable. There's it's it's a corporation. They wouldn't be doing it if it wasn't profitable. There's something that's making it. And is it does it have different value? It has political capital. It has, hey, we do you want, you know, do you want the new Ford to be trending? Like, yeah. Or it's being, or the, the books are being cooked, which I think that's probably a more plausible explanation. But either way, let's say it really isn't profitable. Because yeah. like on BitChute and DTube, other sites that I upload my shit to, they have like limits on like the quality of the video, the frequency mm. of videos, the length of videos. That's the reason because, we're talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's it's because they, it's like you, your server time like this costs a ton of money is that is rogan going to get the 100 million just so he can run this thing and be like you know i don't even care if it's profitable the reason why i wouldn't believe it is i was i would think about it like a business and and everything you said is true fucking lawyers fucking engineers scientists blah blah blah. the amount of people that keep this fucking bad boy running but then i go okay but they pay people right like what's their product what's their service well they have videos and they sell advertisements for videos and they pay creators to do that are they afraid if they paid their creators less money that they would leave uh i don't think so there's no other youtube there's no other like place really that someone would do that so if they took everything they paid these people and clearly some of these people are getting rich off of it the logan pauls the whoever right if you paid them half of what they're making then like all of a sudden your profits double or what so something like this right you know like yeah I don't see that they couldn't just pay people less if they were really afraid of bleeding like that. But maybe there is some fear about, oh, by paying people so well, we get like the best of the best in the world as content creation. But I don't really think that's true at this, at least at this point, just because YouTube is so popular and there doesn't seem to be that many options, you know? Yeah, you're right. It's, I mean, yeah, they have content creation like no other. And not only that, like I have YouTube premium. I've had it for like a year, $15 a month. So I don't have to, because that's how I listen to music and documentaries. I don't want ads. Hmm. That's $15 a month. That's, that's just one person. There's 2 billion active users. But the other thing is like, they made a switch in like early 2019, which is the bane of my existence. It used to be you had to have 10,000 views total on your channel to get monetized and you could start. Right. And they changed it to you have to have 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 public watch hours. So like, let's say this episode 60 minutes, I put it up and you watch the whole thing, that's 60 minutes of watch time. Mm -hmm. You gotta get 4,000 hours, which is I believe 240,000 minutes within a 12 month period. Mm -hmm. That has weeded out, I would imagine, an insane amount. Because I'm going full like pre-med psychopath on this. Yeah, I've got yeah. 4,000 hours. But even I'm an exception. All, I put out videos that are hours long. Most Wait, so don't. you said they lowered the hour count, but it was like a, a trick. Like it was 10,000, but now it's no, no, 4,000 no, no. within it, a year? It, was, it used to be there was one stipulation to get monetized. Yeah. 1,000 views total, total on your channel, which For is easy. Years, ever. Forever. My channel oh. has, I'm at 52,000 views now total. Got it. It's not even a year old, right? Right. But it changed to you have to have 1,000 subscribers. Right. And 4,000 view hours. They don't even count views anymore. Right. Because okay. I have gone full OCD psychopath on this and I passed the 4,000 viewers. I'm at 588 subscribers right now. I'm still not at 1,000. 
so I can only imagine that if I've gone fucking full just psycho on this and I can't get it yet, then every other random channel where it's like half baked meme, and not only that, they've crunched down on like you can only get monetized if it's original content. If you're just putting up like memes or like you know a, a picture of you know a video of Trump walking with like music played over it, right? That's like Fox News's video, right? Mon- none can't get monetized. So I think they. I mean, I think they eviscerated like 99% of people getting payouts. That's crazy, man. Yeah. So from that standpoint, maybe that would make sense. Maybe they're saving money doing that. Either way, Spotify taking away to getting Rogan. Maybe that is a benefit. Maybe it's just any competition is good, right? Right. That's what I hope. I, I was actually tripping out thinking about the other day because I was thinking about like if I had a kid or like kids in the future, like how there's this lane of like career that they can do now. And what's like the craziest fucking thing you can do with no help from anyone that you can like put on like a camera or something. So I was like watching this cartoon. I was watching an anime that I like that probably shouldn't be on YouTube that they should pull down. And I was like, I mean, this is awesome, but like this takes like a lot of fucking people like this is a little 30 minute episode like think about all the people drawing and coloring and then i was like but like some people are just singing or like tommy's just talking that's just me and him we're like and then i was like thinking about david blaine i don't know if you saw the the new david blaine uh, deal with youtube i was like magic like if you could just do magic in front of people like just walk around that's your life you're just like a street performer who does magic but you like upload these videos to youtube with millions of views like so like kids can think of like what can i do that's original content it's like special to me like the idea of original content it's like a new umbrella normally you're like oh i play music or oh i sing or i'm a dancer now but it's now it's this ball. whole like tiktok like that fucking girl that charlie girl that's like a fucking gazillionaire now just because they're like she's like white girl dance moves do you even know what i'm talking about nope but that, but there's like some girl on tiktok with like 80 million uh you know tiktokers and she's just know. like kind of a, she's like sort of cute. She's like 16, she's just yeah. like this kind of wealthy white girl yeah. who just like, like kind of dances, not like slutty dancing, but just yeah. like, like sure. good, dan- like she's like a good dancer. Yeah. And like, that's it. That's what she does. And she's like, she has 80 million. Well, that's, that's one thing I do with this is I think I'm like, I don't have any other people to like pay. I don't have like a, right. you know, I don't have my like animators. I don't have to, they all need health insurance plans and I got to pay for the parking lot and air conditioning and, Right. Just me talking, zero production value. I mean, yeah. I mean, finish the recording, finish the episode, <laughs> stop recording, upload. Right. It's and it's only me. So, but yeah, I've, Tim Dillon said it. He was like, "It's a weird thing, because now what you told kids to do is to stay. You know, to be successful, you gotta stop playing video games, stop doing drugs, so get off yeah. online, go get a job." Yeah. Well, that doesn't mean anything now. Like the yeah. household value has been dropping for three decades. There's no right. insurance. Everyone's out of work. What are people making money off of? Smoking pot, playing video games. I mean, Pootie Pie makes something like $16 million a year. Like, I was thinking about him as a counter example to what I was saying, right? So like you can do it on Twitch as well, right? Is yeah. it Ninja or PewDiePie? Like, like there is other... Yeah, Twitch is a it, that I couldn't get on Twitch. I I, I I had to lie. I had to do it live. That was their stipulation. I couldn't upload. Oh, okay. And I, was like, hey. I was like, why can't I? Don't and then know. for me, like I love me- making music so much, but it's such a pain in the ass. Like you got to have so many. I mean, like you could go the J Cole route, like which I fantasize about doing, just in my room, like becoming my own producer and my own equipment. Like you know, like that's such a long, do slow it. road. Do it. You know. Do it. The time but like, make, like math i'm like should i make math videos should i just like 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 there's like it's so beautiful like that you uh have this like going on for you you know and, and just in general like like i'm thinking of the levels oh he's just talking oh he's dancing oh he's singing just like how much how many other people are involved and if you add one more person is it double is it halving the profits but is it making it doubly better right so there's like a weird balance where maybe a team of three actually is the best because you it's it's that much better of a video yeah and so finding some, that sweet spot. For some, I would say that. For some of those like Vsauce, Virtus Serum, Curious yeah, Tour, yeah. you could say MKBHD, Linus Tech Tips, all of those. You could definitely see where like they have teams and you can definitely see where it pays off. Like the right. audio is cri- – there's, no there's, no, there's not a single extra second of video. There's no fluff. The angles, right. the animations, the light, the transitions, it's 
it's perfect. And one guy can't be doing that. So yeah, there is a payoff. I think for other things like Rogan has Jamie. If I ever, at one point, I could definitely see me getting like someone, ju- someone to take control of NORAD, someone to upload everything. Right. But like, dude, I find all my guests. I do everything, and yeah. it's so what you were. Yeah. Does it double? Does it make it that much better? For no. me, I don't think it does. It wouldn't uh, yet, at least. Not, right? not yet. Not yet. Get to a point where like you can bump up the audio, bump up the video. But even then, I don't ever want it to be produced. I like the sort of natural feel to it. But for you, I was so the way I look at it as it's, it's just like the time will pass anyway. Mm. Time is going to pass. It doesn't right. matter. The time will. And if the time doesn't pass, it's because you're dead. And then it doesn't matter. None of it is not. It's like the, the EOD tech I had on. It was like the quote amongst like bomb diffusers is how do you stay calm? Well, I got to stay calm. What about if it doesn't go bad? Well, it's not my problem anymore. Cause I'm not here. <laughs> I'm vaporized. Right. Right. So right. Like, right. Like, there's nothing else to do, but to stay calm. Right. You're not going to feel anything. You're not even going to know what's happening. You just, right. you won't be here. Reincarnation, black, who knows? But yeah. so, fuck, where was I going with that? Uh, stay calm, dude. But, 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 but. The time is going to pass. The time is going to pass regardless. So what you have to do is, what is the one thing that you know you can consistently do? Right? right. That's what I was always, I can't preach it now because I've gained weight. But in like high school when I was yoked, right? The yes. one thing I'd always tell everyone, I'd be like, don't go for the three-hour workout. I'd be like, choose the thing that you're going to do every single day. Right. Ten minutes, stick with that. But I'm not doing enough. It doesn't matter because six months will pass and you'll go, oh, man, we are hitting it really hard for two weeks. Then we stop. Versus yeah. the one person that's been doing a couple of sit-ups a day, a year later. I, I mean, yeah, dude, we graduated college 11 years ago this past – or not uh, – yeah. high school. Don't say that. Don't say that. But that's what I'm saying. 11 years. It went by like that. Yeah, right. Right. And it feels like forever. We're never going to get there. 2030, that's so far away, man. Trey, can you believe it's 2030? Yeah. So my logic was – why don't and this is what my logic in December? I was like, why don't I just start doing something every day that I will ha- I'll have something to show for it, right? Yeah. Every day it doesn't. So it was. I looked at it as like video games, like grinding on a video game to get like a skin for a gun, like a Chrome AK or whatever. Yeah. You just you don't knock it out in a day. You're like, I'm just gonna do like a couple side missions, like whenever I game takes 20 minutes it's not really fun but then you just go fuck around shoot people whatever and then like a month later you're like oh fuck i got like a thousand whatever credits xps yeah i was like why don't i just do something that i know i'm gonna do every day and so to answer your question like well, so what do i do do i do math do i produce my own thing i have to do something that i like worth working out i hated cardio so i never did cardio i was like i like doing bench and i like listening to like a uh, bass hunter like techno so every day I would just listen to Bass Hunter and do what I wanted. And that eventually over a decade led into me being in perfect shape. Not anymore. Granted. Studly pecs. Studly yeah, pecs. Exactly. But that's what, so with this, I'm like, you know what? Sure. I could produce each video. I could go in and when you and I are talking about MRIs, I could superimpose what we're talking about so that people can follow along. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. But if I start doing that, I'm very quickly – on the first day that I didn't get enough sleep or work was stressful, I'm going to come home and right. be like, I'm not fucking doing it. And so I'm just going to throw the whole thing out. I'm going to throw the baby out with the bathwater. When it's just, hey, cool, if I start recording, let's start recording. Talk, 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 talk. Peace. Stop recording. Upload. I can do that. I have work after this. I'm going to stop, upload it, and walk out the door. So to answer your question, you have to choose the thing that you love the most and that you know you will do. Right. Whatever it is, I won't even worry about what content it is you're putting out. Put out content. So on Major 3rd, start putting out math videos. Who gives a fuck? People right. are going to start watching it. Put out whatever. Just talking. Thoughts. Eventually, you're going to find your way along. You're going to find your find your, your direction along the way. You're going to find right. out what you're doing. And then maybe you have 10,000 people following you for your math, and then one day they're like, yo, have you heard Body Unbelievable? Just talking about perfect hits. Yeah. That's what it's going to be, man. No, what you say is right. And it's inspiring me a little bit. And it's, it's basically like the realiz- realization that with most people, if they're really being honest with themselves, like what you just said about the, the small example of like 
showing the MRI stuff or just like adding in what we said, like you could probably do it off. You do it. You could pull it off for a while, but you know, kind of that you can see yourself like, ah, eh, fuck this. So like people aren't really being like truthful with themselves when they're wanting to like revamp their life, when they're wanting to remake themselves and they tell themselves, Oh, I'm going to do this and this and this. They're like not using the reality of like what they think is about to go down. If you make a really hard workout regimen, like the fourth day, if you do it for three days, the fourth day, you're going to be like, fuck this. Exactly. So like, just like, you know, don't have a problem with setting your bar a little lower with something that you really think you want to do. Right. right? And then, and then, you know, slowly over time growing it. that that's such a wise way of looking at it. My only issue is I do feel like I do so many things that like would be something I could make as content just naturally, whether it's like, like how much I love movies or like the math thing, but I am a little afraid of this like narcissism, narcissism of like the, the younger generation seems able to reveal themselves and behave in a way on camera and, and not be weirded out with it. With, with me, I'm a little more old school where I am either going to like have this self hate or even worse than the self hate would be if I switch over and start liking it and getting positive, then I become a fuckhead. Like yeah. either one of those is gonna not feel good. I think eventually it would be okay and I could handle it in the right scenario, but that is another little nugget of like, oh, fuck, I don't know. Is that, but is that really worth being a limiting factor? It, it, it shouldn't be, but that, that's just like what it? goes to my head. What if you made money from a YouTube channel doing whatever you wanted? What's the downside? Well, what if I do from, it's like, it's so, you, if you buy this lottery ticket, there's a one in five chance of you winning a hundred million dollars. Yeah, but I might get a paper cut. It's like, I know, right? Uh, it's, and it's so weird what I'm saying. It's literally like I would be self-hating myself, which would feel bad. And then like, it would just, the needle would just jump. And then I would just like, think I was hot shit. And I would become like a douchebag. Like, I feel like there wouldn't even be a middle ground of it. Like it would either not be working or be working. And uh, it, it, no, what it is, is it's not a middle ground. It's just both. There are day, like when I had on Mike Durant, I was like, I had on the fucking Black Hawk Down guy. I was like, right, I'm right. a G. And then, like a week later, I was like, "What am I doing? Oh my god, what am I doing?" <laughs> like, right. you know, right. it's like, "Oh, I used to have abs. Now I got a belly." I'm like, "I live at home." I'm like, "What?" And then I'll have on a big guest, and I'll be like, "Fucking beating that shit into the ground." So yeah. it's not an average; it's just both extremes. There's, I see. A, there's a Venn diagram I saw, and it was a, uh, it was artistic creation. It was the center, and they're barely crossing over it. Right. And it's like dep It's like a, um suffocating self-hatred yes and like delusional euphoric manic self-love or, yes. uh, or narcissism yes in the middle Dude, that's literally the story artistic of my life creation, bro. Artistic, artistic creation is right in the middle maybe that that's is it though that. man so do videos of you being like super self-conscious like i fucking hate my but just do those and let those videos suck and then do other ones where it's like man this guy loves himself probably more than he should yeah either way though do the thing that is stacking it's I, I have like a visual in my mind of like the Georgia Dome. I remember like always sitting in the, I would always look up at the Raptors. I would never even watch. Uh, uh, I, I went and saw Drew Bledsoe play on the Patriots there. And I think I looked at the Raptors the whole game. But the Raptors mom, are pretty trippy. I imagine like up, up there. there, like at the end of rush hour where Jackie yeah. Chan like crumbs. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ceiling, you know? I have like a visual of that in my mind when I meditate. And I have like three Georgia Domes. And the first one is, um, is like, what's the most important one? I just need to be building the podcast. So it's like a piggy bank. There's a little slit at the top. And every day, like I drop in a new episode. And an episode is just like, it's like a hard drive. And it just falls into the center. Ding, ding. And right now I'm at 175. There's like a little tiny pile in the middle. They can't break. Right. You ignore that. Some have rolled around. But for the most part, it's still just empty. The other one is money. Every day, I'm, you know, if I get like a tip at work, like a dollar, I'll go deposit it. So every day I'm like, dropping a penny in there think think and the third one is um is is audiobooks it's just i'm like i always have to be learning so no matter how bad the day is no matter how shitty the day is i try to know a little more than yesterday and so in my mind every page of an audiobook i listen to is like a page i'm ripping out of the book and dropping it in there the audiobook one's probably the biggest that's like a, there's like a respectable pile of just paper down there of documentaries of whatever Money one is tiny, podcast one is tiny. But the podcast one, it's it's not necessarily it's putting those in, but then like each view is just like a like a BB. It just falls in there. Right. Every day I'm like, just I don't care if it's I try I strive to make great episodes. There are days where I finish it, and I'm like, man, and it's never the guest. There are days where I'm just like, I was not all there. I was not even 
it's a shitty one, but I put the BB in and think, and it just keep going. So no matter what happens, I look at December till now, we, I've had on good guests, I've had on bad guests, I've had episodes where I feel like I'm killing it. I've had just days of just crushing self-hatred and disillusionment. There's been a pandemic, Kobe died, right? Throughout all of it though, what is the one thing that has happened? The time has passed. Now it's September. Now it's September. It's September now. It's fucking September. What has happened? A lot of weird shit's happened, but you know what I do have? I have however many months, nine months, nine times 270. There are 270 BBs down there. That's 270 BBs where even if I, and there are the first, like in January, I went like really hard in this podcast. I did like two episodes a day for like three weeks, which is crazy. I did, and they they were each like two and a half, three hours. It was insane. And I realized at the end of it, I was only at episode 40 and I was burned the fuck out. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is not going to last. So instead I was like, let's aim to do, let's aim to do 15 a month. Every month I do more than that, but I only aim to do 15. And I'm like, let's try to do at least 60 minutes. Mm. Most go about 70 minutes. Now blink my eye, it's September, episode 176. It's just like, wow. Right. Wow. It's 176. And it's, you were on, I think your first episode was almost a hundred episodes ago. Wow. hundred episodes. And it's just tink, tink. It's just, man, PewDiePie has 100 million subscribers. I'm at 588, just 588, not even 1,000. And I'm like, just keep dropping. And it just keeps ticking up slowly and slowly. And now the time has passed. I take the podcast in different directions. I do different shit. But now I'm at 176 episodes. It's actually like a pretty, like a well thought out, like kind of beautiful philosophy you have going on. But it feels a little like a, not unorganized but it's like i can tell it's organically coming from like your experience can you like speak to that a little bit like you think that was from working out is that like where it all started or is it from med school or like reading a book like you have this the time will pass like like the time will pass anyways small incremental change like you kind of have you know what i mean like it feels like a formal system that you're kind of accidentally developing just naturally yeah i'll talk on that can you fill the air for 30 seconds i gotta go (laughs) god damn it that was inspirational, right, folks? Be realistic with your goals, your expectations. You know, set the bar high, not too high. I think that's where a lot of us make a mistake. I know that I do that all the time, where I say I'm going to do something and I can do it for three days, three weeks, even three months, but then fall off. Tommy used to be jacked, guys. Tommy was shredded. He looked like those, uh, those like plastic dolls when you're little. They're like stretchy. Are they stretchy? They're like, you know, they're like strong men, but they have like putty muscles. I'm telling the world how jacked you were. Yeah, he used to. I need to, I'll get it. Do you remember when we joke like uh, something about your muscles? Like I was like, I was like picking you up or something. And I was like, you're not very heavy. And you're like, yeah, these are just show muscles. These are like, oh, yeah. Are- oh, yeah, I never did. It was never for strength. People were like, how much do you bench? In my mind, I'd be like, like not, not that much. much. <laughs> not a lot, man. It's aesthetics. That's what I used it for. Um, funny, yeah, JP, JP Bleacher used to joke. He's like, Tommy has a Play Doh machine. He's just fat. He gets in a Play Doh machine every morning. Yeah, like, yeah oh, squeeze it all. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, but yeah, that sort of organic system, that definitely, uh, yeah, that st- probably started with working out. Med school was, that was like the pre-med, that was like the next thing where it was like, this isn't going to happen in a month or even a semester or even a year. This is going to take four years. And it was like slow and steady, just stay the course. And it did. And it was just, when I first decided to be pre-med, I went, I went to the library like 14 hours a day. I'd study till like two in the morning. I'd come home, get up at six and just start going again. And I did that for like a month. And then I was like, the adrenaline wore off like the newfound glory that I'm going to be a doctor. And I was like, I am exhausted. And just like the workout, it was like, so instead of deciding I'm tired today, I'm only going to go do six hours. I was like, if I'm not doing 14, I'm just, I'm just not going to do it. And I would, and I was like, okay, I remember sitting there. This was like October, 2010. I was like, if I'm going to do this, it needs to be slow and steady. Like got to put in a lot of work, but it's got to be real, like realistic. I was like, I know 
that I can go for about an hour and a half before I need a break. Do an hour and a half. I would do like 10 minutes of Facebook, maybe jerk off and then do like 10 minutes of like meditation. So every two hours I did 90 minutes of work. I was like, I know I can do that session. If I exercise and get a good night's sleep, I know I can do that sort of cycle. Yeah. Wait, say it to me again. Two hours, 30 minutes. No, no. every two hours I would do 90 minutes of work. So I do 90 minutes of work. I take 10 got minutes it. off of just like brain fried. And got I would it, got just it. get on Reddit and just kind of drool for a minute. Got it. Got it. I would normally like jerk, I would jerk off like three times a day sure, and then sure. like just, just stress. And then I would do like 10 minutes of like a mini meditation. And I'll be like, remember why you're doing this. I'd be like, just get through today. Just like dropping the penny. Like just, right. I could do that full cycle. I could guarantee myself I could do four of those cycles a day. That was a bare minimum. I could do eight hours a day. Most days I, w- I could do 10, 10, 12 hours. So like six cycles. But every day I was like, I know I can do four. If I have nothing else to do that day, I know I can do five. If I have classes, I can probably do like three of those cycles. You got to do them early. You got to do them when you're refreshed. You can't do it at the end of the day. It requires your A game, right? It's like the first couple of plays of the Super Bowl where they're just all out, right? They're all getting their nerves out. Yeah. Okay. And I was like, just keep it real. And like once or like every like two weeks, every other Friday, I would start to hit this like kind of more meta burnout. So every other, so everyone knew it at UGA. It was like, oh, it's, every, it's the, is it the second week? Because I would go out and just get blackout drunk, eat like a ton of five guys, like gain weight to spend a ton of money, get fucking loaded. The next day be hungover as hell, get high as fuck. And then I'd start up again and have like 13 days of like, go get it. Right. I would burn it. And, and I did that sort of like two hour cycle and 14 day cycle. Mm. And I just did that and it went for four years and I did it and I, and I got in. When I took mushrooms in December, 2013 and realized I didn't want to be a doctor I linked, I was like, I don't want to do this, but I linked all kind of, we were talking about like the song earlier. That might be your first date song. That might be, you know, your yeah, death yeah. in the family song. I linked that long-term work with unconsciously. I linked it with the feeling of hating studying all day, every day to get into med school. Right. right? I did that long-term thing in high school to get muscle. And I really liked that. I did it again in college and instead of going, it's not the work that's a problem. It's what you were doing was the problem. You, you weren't, you didn't love it. Like that's the reality right. is you just wanted to be a doctor to be, to, to, you know, to not be a failure, right? Probably some deep seated chip on my shoulder. And I linked the two instead of saying, do something else you like. I just said, I fucking hate all of it. And I'm yes. finished with all of it. I was like, it's, I want to stop having distant goals, stop working all day, every day. I just want to enjoy myself. And then four months after that, brother took his life so if that hadn't happened i imagine i probably would have looked at that after four months and gone you know what i do like working it's just i need to find something else i love yeah but i didn't have that metaphorical time to breathe because existential crisis right yeah boom no one can handle that and so that kind of mixed and then not only it was like i spent four years studying in college i was like i'm I'm old now i'm 23 i was like so it was like a midlife crisis at 23 so it was like change in philosophy, midlife crisis, and then threw in a suicide on it. Well, that's just the recipe for like what I'm still doing with trying to get rid of weight, like sober, got to like moved home in 2016 after getting pretty suicidal myself. And at that point, it wasn't that I hated work. It's I think I forgot. I forgot that daily grind thing. So I would start new things. I started, uh, I wanted to be an author. So I went really hard and I wrote that, that story I sent you about psychedelics. Mm-hmm. And then I got burned out and said, fuck that. And I got mad that I wasn't a millionaire author within six months. So I said, fuck that. And then I got into like trying to do comedy and making funny photoshops. I remember I was trying to sell like Trump shirts. And then I was also trying to sell like Hillary shirts on another company. Got really mad that I wasn't a millionaire in a month. And it kind of kept happening. And I kept doing Photoshop, but I liked Photoshop. So I just kept doing it. Right. And then kind of got upset about that, that I wasn't a millionaire. I still like Photoshop though. And then in December, I just remember thinking it was December and I was sitting there watching, uh, what is the, um, what's the most recent gangster movie with the Nero? The Irishman. I was watching that with my dad and I was downstairs. Good movie. And I could just like feel like my titties. I was on the couch and I was just like, I couldn't even enjoy the movie because I could just feel like my tits. And I was just like, and it just hit me. I was like, time is going to pass. 
just start dieting. And granted, I'm only 15 pounds lighter than I was then, but that's, but I remember thinking, I was like, what if I just grind really hard? Maybe I can lose like 50 pounds in three months. And then I thought like, that's what I've been doing for the last three years, comedy, writing, Photoshopping shirts, same with weight loss, where it's like, if I can't have it now, then I don't want it. And then what you said earlier, lo- be okay with lowering the bar. I was like, so what if I press, what if I try to lose 15 pounds in 2020? And right now I'm, I've, I've met my goal. So I hopefully I can push it farther. And next year will be f- 15 more pounds, right? I can't wait to be ripped again. I'm, I miss it. I feel I'm, my tits is like one of the funniest phrases I've ever heard. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was the- I feel my own tits. I feel them. And I was just like, ah. Oh. And um, yeah. And I was like, why don't I aim, this was December, so I was like, why don't I aim to lose 15 pounds next year? And instantly I was like, what's the point of even doing 15 pounds? Then you're only 200, which is where I'm at now. And I was like, no, that's not a lot. It's not a lot. You're right. And you're not going to look much better. It's probably going to take three or four years of doing this to even look marginally better. But I was like, if I can't even keep off five, why am I bitching about doing 15? Because if, right. if I can't be okay with doing 15, how the fuck am I going to do 50, right? No, it's such a psychological trick we play on ourselves, right? Because yeah, it feels I can't have like, it all that I don't want it. it and, and like you feel like you're lowering the bar, which is is what I said, and it is that. But it's kind of like you're 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 secretly raising the bar, right? Like it, you have to lower your short term yes. expectations in order to raise your long term potential, yes. Yes. right? So it's, it's like such a mind see. fuck where you're like it's hard to see. Yeah, it's a lot of failure to get to that point, right? So. I was just like, the time is going to pass. Why don't I just start? And then I'd always wanted to start a podcast. I'd wanted to start a podcast since 2015. Mm. And then I was just like, I want to start. And it was like, like you, I was like, I'm just going to hate it. And then I was like, what if I become a douchebag? Like, hey, YouTubers. And I was just like, what do I want? I was like, I love talking to people. I love, maybe that's my narcissism is I love the sound of my voice. And I was like, why don't I just start? who am I going to get as a guest? I'm like, well, I can't get anyone as a guest. I don't even have a podcast to show up. So I was asking other people, they're like, can I see some episodes? And I was like, eh. There aren't any. So and honestly, it just sounded like a, like a bad like FBI scheme. Like, this is all a front. So finally, yeah. I was like, why don't I start with people I know won't care? So like my friend Durant, I was like, we just come on and just talk about anything. I was like, literally like a, like a prostitute. I was like, I'll do all the work, baby. Don't worry, right? <laughs> I'll make you come. You just show up. And yeah. I did it and I was like, and I forced the episode and I was like, let's do one a week. And I started doing one a week. And, but I remember before I knew it, I was on episode five and I was like, wow. And that was the first, like, so it was like a couple, like a week prior, I thought about the time is going to pass. This was the first, the time is going to pass. And I wasn't even thinking about that. I was thinking about that with weight loss, not the podcast. Right. And I was like, wow. I was like, that like learned a lesson. I was like, it'll be the same with weight. And then like another like two weeks passed and I was just, I was like, let's keep it realistic and just do one a week. Yeah. And like January came around and I, had, I was at like eight episodes and I had like four subscribers and I was like, you know, it was just, I was just watching the Irishman and thinking Christmas is only three weeks away. And now I was like, New Year's was a week, a week ago. And it was like, wow. And it was literally like, almost like the UFO. It wasn't that I was like, oh yeah, this is what I did in college. I was like, rediscovering this like slow i was like i feel like i've done this before it was almost like coming out of a fog i was like this like slow you didn't connect the dots until later yeah. that's how <laughs> that's how far off the rails i went after my brother like it wasn't even that i remembered what i had forgotten it was amnesia graham hancock it was like amnesia and right. sort of uncovering like gobekli tepe i was like whoa this is weird and i so i started doing more episodes and then i and then i started to make the mistake that i had made the four previous years i was like what if i did two a day i could right. do two a day. ramped it up too much I'm like, let's go and i did it and i be and i came close to like quitting and i was like and i gained some weight back and i was like this is how it starts and i was like let's just do three a week i was like that's realistic i can do three episodes a week and i was like but that's not a lot that's not then i'm not going to get it fast enough and i was like if you can't do three a week how are you going to do 14 a week and i was right. like let's just it's just going to take time. And I was like, okay. I was like, well, how am I going to stick to it? How about you only have on friends and you do no production value? And I was like, I can do that. And I was like, okay. And I kind of just kept blinking. And I was like, oh, now I'm at episode 20. And I kind of blink again. Now I'm at episode 30. 
Now I'm at 214 pounds. Now I'm at 213. Right now I'm at 197.8. I'd like to get to like 170. And I was like, man. And every once in a while I'd go on these little spurts where I'd be like, let's do another one, another one. And I'd be like, slow it down, slow it down. And then, you know, if you're tired, take a day off, play some video games. And I was like, the way for the, I was like, so let's just look at the graph. I'm doing more episodes. I'm getting more subscribers and more views. It's going slow, but just like Voyager past the heliosphere, it's taking time, but on a long enough timeline, it's going to get to another star. So I was like, this is simple enough that I have no problem. I thoroughly enjoy doing it. I can mm-hmm. work. I was like, I can do this. Every, I could do this every day for 10 years. I was like, just let it run. I was almost like, I was almost like I climbed to altitude. I got to 35,000 feet. The seatbelt on came off and I was like, just touch the wheel, but just keep it on. Just go, just go. We're flying from LA to, to Melbourne. Like there's, it's not happening in the next hour. Just, so I kept it going and every once in a while I get a little amped up and I'd be like, let's try to get a bigger guest. Right. So I'd get a Delta force guy or I'd get a weightlifter. Or I'd get an author. And those take a lot out of you. You got to find them. 99% will say no. 1% will say yes. If they say yes, you get their book, you prep it, get jacked up, ready to go, do the episode. Oh, I wanted it to be a million views. It only got a thousand. You kind of get depressed a little bit. I had on the Black Hawk Down pilot. It's at 1800 views. Like I'm still upset about that, but I'm like, you know what? It's just, I reel it back in whenever you'll notice whenever I have on like a relatively big guest, yeah, I'll have like another week or two of just me and friends. Cause I'm like, how do I do the bare mint? Cause like after it, I get burned out, I get disillusioned. I'm like, how come I don't have 10 million views? How come Rogan's not asking me to be on? Like, meh, meh, meh. And I'm like, just keep it, keep it. It's better to get like a penny a day in the Georgia dome than to drop hundred dollar bills, have on friends, talk about UFOs. We talk about MRI shapes. We talk whatever. And I keep it going. And I sort of, I go from a sprint back down to like a light jog. And then I catch my breath and I'm like, get another author i got an idea for an author let's try. and i get disillusioned i get heartbroken and i finally get one i'm get having on an author named norman oler on september 22nd who's the author of a best-selling book called blitz the history of drugs in the third reich so now i'm listening to it i'm doing questions it's maybe insane rogan talk about that right it, it what maybe rogan's talked about that i've heard of that book they were oh really they were on meth dude it's crazy yeah yeah and so I'm listening to it and it's taking a lot out. I'm, I listen to the books three or four times when I have on guests, I write down questions and it gets, and then, yeah, it gets a little, ugh, it, it gets hard and then I'll do it and sort of like a little burned out. I'm like, okay, let's just have on a friend tomorrow and talk about fucking Kanye is running for president. Just no mental exertion, just fucking dicks, you know, UFO jokes, big titties, porn. Yeah. And then just, I sort of let it come down again. And now where I am is, all right, this is 176. Right. Wow. Like, wow. Next Thursday, I'm having on a guy that, a president of a laser cleaning company, they clean rust with lasers. Oh. Okay. All right. Just slow. Having on Eben Alexander, a, a Harvard neurosurgeon and New York Times bestseller who fell into a coma in 2010 for seven days that has a one in 10 million survival rate and he survived, but he remembers everything. And he said, and not just like, you know, I remember like the doctors around me, he remembers going to the afterlife <laughs> and Welcome. he wrote a book called proof of heaven. Oh, I think I've heard of that. The New York times best. And this guy is, he's not, a, he's a Harvard neurosurgeon. <laughs> and so he's like, I remember, he's like, that was more clear than like how I remember yesterday. I'm having him on. And so it's just like, I get these little like gems and then I have like, low low effort but very enjoyable episodes with friends and it's it's not to say i don't enjoy the 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 big authors the brigadier general i had on but that takes a lot you gotta sit up you know i'm talking to a former b2 spirit pilot you gotta you gotta be there and then i have episodes where it's like no these aren't going to be like my heavy hitters bring in thousands of views but i'm like i'm amped to talk to trey about mris and cymatics and we're just going to take our dicks out and, and jerk each other off big triumphant veiny bastards and those refresh me in yeah. the same ways that the intense uh the big guests refresh me and they sort of give me the inspiration to keep going so i know i'm absolutely raping you in the ear with this explanation no no dude. i'm like inspired truly like i want to jerk you off i don't know how much time we have no, before we, we have to go we, but we jerk each other off. Yeah, man, because uh 
it, 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 you really are like an accidental guru. Like, like it's funny because like on the surface, no one would suspect that of you or I know. like the, 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 the way you're describing it and there's like ups and downs and like, you don't really have like a Zen truth to it. But like what you're saying, there's like, there's like a nugget of really well thought out, like guru level and it's inspiring me. And I, at the very least, this two hour, 30 minute, 90 minute cycle, I, I'm, I'm borderline gonna implement that today. And it's so trippy because basically what you're doing is you're taking for me, which has been one of the most painful things ap about existence, which is that when you project forward in time, it's incredibly slow and painful. And when you project backwards in time, it's incredibly short. And literally my speech, when I was a, uh, in my fraternity, my senior year of college, and we had to give like our little speeches, and I was like not really into it. I was like, this is weird, like this isn't my vibe. But people were saying some things that I thought were interesting and good. And so when it came my turn, this kind of came to me, and I was like, you know what? I wasn't really gonna say anything, but truthfully, like do not take it for granted. Enjoy every moment because there's this fence, there's this weird fence to the future where you're like, what's happening over there? right? There's like, there's like a wall. And so you're like looking forward in this way where like someone could be like two years older than me. And they seemed like they were so fucking old. Yeah. Like they seemed like they were a completely person I couldn't relate to. Then two years would go by, I would be in their spot and I would look back two years and I'd be like, that person's the exact same age as me. You know what I mean? It's like my whole life, I was having this contradiction of projecting forward. And then when I got there looking back and it was been painful for me, it's been like not a good experience. You're basically taking that, acknowledging it and repurposing it, repackaging it in this sort of guru lifestyle, productivity, like, like seminar, I feel like you're giving me. And it's actually like really inspirational because I can tell that it's real. And it's not like someone who's like, this is how you should do it. And like, oh, oh God. I always feel great. And I meditate every morning. There's no road bumps at all. Like you're like giving it in this real raw, like truthful, yeah. anecdotal, personal feeling your titty story. And it, it's actually like, like that first time we talked and you told me about cold calling people that just inspired me because that sounded so painful that you had to do that. But right. even this is like, even like several levels above, like I really do oh, feel like I want to like kick today's ass right now because I'm going to try this like cycling thing and just look at this, uh, this, this thing about time, this time passing anyway thing is really kind of like rocking my world. Like I gotta like chew on it for a while, you know? That's what I started. That's what I, I just started thinking. I was like, the time is going to pass. And, and you're right. I mean, right now I got to go to work today. I got to work till nine stocking liquor shelves. Work as you know as anyone knows for the job work crawls by just yeah. and, you're, and you're like this day is never gonna end i have like i have found the glitch in the universe time has yeah. paused and i am here for eternity this is just you know i am this is a like a greek god punishment but then and but i was thinking yeah, about opposite that. why does that happen i don't know but then i was thinking about that and i was like man that has happened as i was thinking that i was like this is like my fourth week working here I was like, well, what has happened? I've done this four weeks worth. Yes. Gone. But today is the day that's never going to end. Yeah, right. And so even then, I know I'm going to do today. I'm going to go there and it's going to suck dick. I'm going to blink my eyes. It's going to be, I work Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I'm going to be back up Monday and be like, Whew, thank God I got those three days behind me. The time is going to pass anyway. So have something to show for it. So dieting is like a hard one because it's, you can lose weight but then you can gain it again and then it's all voided. And that's like the painful, that's why so few people can look great, like fucking like Lincoln or someone. It's just, yeah. that's why it is the upper echelon. Right. But like something like this, like no one can take away the podcast. I put up an episode, it's up now. Delete right. it. Well, now I've got Nora at it, right? Now right. it's on multiple things. So it's do something every day and just, you just, it's up and you can build on that. And it's almost like a, ion thrusters you know like xenon ion right. thrusters in space yeah, they, tiny, they accelerate yep. so slowly but they do it for like years yep, yep. so that's what this is i'm like it's just an episode just today it's i came and it's do the best you can that day got eight hours of sleep last night i walked a mile i showered i meditated no problems ever no no like you said no, no. i yep. mean constant oh, right. constant self-hatred constantly feeling my tits like hate it like have to go to work today. God damn it. I'm 30. I live above my parents' room. Rogan just got signed for a hundred million dollars. I can't even get an ad to run on this thing, but I'm like, what can I do today? I can do an episode with Trey. I can bring my A game. I know I'm good for 60 to 90 minutes of A game 
I can upload it, go to work, hate my life for five hours. Tomorrow I've got another episode with a guy from work whose dad was a Navy SEAL and went to jail for triple homicide. Recently passed away. There's an episode. Okay, it's going to be crazy. I have no idea what's going to come of it. Doing that one tomorrow. Is that going to get me 10 million views? No. But it's going to get me some and it's going to seep. It's going to seep into some more people's minds and it's just going to keep going. It's been nine months, 175, 176 episodes. I'm still not where I want it to be. Okay. Nine months. What about another nine months? It's going to be- You're weaponizing that feeling that I hate yes. and you're exactly. kind of like trying to exactly. use it to your advantage, you know? Exactly. And I still hate it. Yeah. Just like this whole spiel I just gave you, like I fully believe that like it will never be October. It's just today is going to go forever. It's just I have fallen into a black hole of time and it's I am stuck on September 4th forever. I'm going to blink and it's going to be December and it's going to be a year of the episode, of the podcast. I'm going to blink and it's going to be a decade. A decade? Bullshit. 11 years ago, we were fucking getting our diplomas at Pius. I know, dude. I hate that. The college experience. We have now been out of college. Actually, next year, we will be out of college longer than we were, we were in high school and college. We're further away than, than on the other side of it. Our yeah. senior year, 9-11 anniversary was closer to 9-11 than it is to this 9-11 anniversary next week. That hurts to think about. No. Yeah, 18 years, right? No, that can't be right. No, 2009 to 2001. Eight years. Yeah, now it it's is, 12. It is true. Yep. <laughs> so that day is closer to, to that day of you know them announcing and Bush saying we're going to go get them. And that is closer to then than that is to now. So the time is going to pass. Now, if it doesn't pass, the only caveat to this is what if I do all this work and it doesn't work out. Well, the only way it cannot work out is if you don't get to that point in the future. If you quit, it won't work. Now, I don't know if this podcast is going to work in a year, five years, 35 years. Right. The, but as long as I don't quit, then it's not that it's failed. It's just that it hasn't worked yet. There's only two I'm, ways that it can fail. Yeah. Is if I quit or if I die. Well, I know, I can control that I won't. Mine's quit. okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. No, but I really I broke it down to like what are the extremes? If I quit, well, I can control that. The other thing will be, well, what if I die before it works? Well, then I won't be here to be upset that I put in that much time. Exactly. So that's how I've broken it down to: before I quit or before I die. I don't think I'm gonna die, and I know I I can make myself not quit if I can just do one day at a time. Well, then if you look at it from that point. Time is going to pass, man. I'm going to blink my eyes and be 40, 50, 60. If the time is going to pass, I'd rather beat the time pass from now until age 55 and be Rogan with $100 million in my own studio than be 55 and not have that. It's crazy, man. I, I really do feel good about it. Can I be a psycho and twist like something completely random at the last second? Because I have this weird primal part of my brain. Yeah, I got nine like, more minutes I can do. Yeah, we're about to leave. Like, ask him this because like it's like this psycho monkey part. What? <laughs> when I was thinking about like who you were talking to, like if you talk to someone, I know because I'm sure you have, who's killed someone, did you feel like there was like, I, I just want to know what, like, a, a quick that? story about like what it's like to talk to someone who's like took in someone's life. Can you feel like you can detect it? Is it like, is it like anything else where you kind of think going in, it might be one way, but really it's the full range. Like this guy's happy go lucky. This guy's like intense and dark. And like the killing part is not actually something that you feel should, like should, is yeah. shaking them. Yeah. So I had on a police sergeant, episode, I think it was episode 22, James Lucero. And he talked about, uh, having to shoot a guy that was going for a knife and he was like charging them and like he still thinks bad to this day and like the guy was like schizophrenic and the guy and so he ended up writing like a letter to their family explained exactly what happened and I think it's still in touch with their family and it's like all like good it was like a tragic end to a tragic life you could tell that really affected him like really affect I think this was like 20 years ago the next guy I had on um, who, who was it? It was, um, fuck. I feel like it's fucked up that I asked about murder. No, 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 no not at all. No, I, I couldn't, I, no, I, I was going to annoy that. me. No, it was an Air Force guy. It was an Air Force guy, but they were on like a ground mission, like an Air Force Intel guy. And they were engaged in like Ramadi or something. And he, sh and he shot the driver of an SUV coming at him. They had like a ton of bombs and, uh, yeah, shot him through. Like a bullet went through the guy's head, went through like the next three seats and out the back of the car. And you could tell you definitely, but this guy was military, so probably a little, a little more like wrapped up about it. Um, 
and then I had on like Delta Force guys who talk. I mean, it, 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 it's just another day to them. To them, it's yeah. the objective. They just say they just they say they remember the first one. Like Dale, Dale right. was on a was on one of those little helicopters, the Little Birds, going into. If you've ever played Black Ops Two, going into Panama to get Noriega, they were trying to get a Kurt Muse, who was a CIA. Uh, a agent who was imprisoned in Panama at, at Modelo prison mm -hmm. and uh, Mike Durant, the Black Hawk down guy was flying there too. But Dale was there. Dale was the breacher. And it was like his, he was the youngest guy ever in Delta force. He was 23. He says, they remember swooping in. He remember seeing a guy with a gun standing behind a woman and they were taking pot shots at him. And then like the, they went behind a wall into a cemetery and he said, the woman broke left and he saw the guy breaking right. And he's like, just engage the target boom, 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 right through the head. He goes, and that was my first confirmed kill. And then the, he tells all their stories. And from then on out, it's just like, he, he says like the words are just like, yeah, I smoked them. It's just, these right, guys, right. I mean, dude, Delta Force is, these guys are killers. Uh, right. Joe Tedai, who was, uh, with, worked with Dale in a CIA unit, told me the first story. And it was like, he was in some compound in Afghanistan and like a gun flew over the edge of the building. And he was like, mm -hmm. what the fuck? He was like in this courtyard and there's, there's like this 10 foot wall. And like a gun through, and he's like, what the? And he said he just saw this like Afghani dude crawling up after it, and he like he like, literally like threw his gun first, and then like he jumped down. And Ted, I said he looked at him and was like, hey! and like you know, held. Up. Said the guy like looked at him. Said it was almost comical if it wasn't so tragic. Said he like looked at him, looked at the gun, looked at him, ran to the gun, and Ted, I was yelling at him. I didn't know, knew this. He said adrenaline, and he goes, "That shit's real." He goes, "That's not Hollywood." He goes, "Vision." Room. He goes slow motion. I could see like the ripples of his shirt. He goes, I could smell the dust. He goes, I can still smell it. And he goes, the guy went for it. And then he goes, and then I fired as I was trained two rounds. He goes, but I remember looking back on my magazine afterwards and realized I had fired like eleven rounds because it happened so fast. He goes, smoked him. And then from then on out, it's just what you, you don't do. Remember anymore. Uh, Dale talks about in his book American Badass. He talks about. People shit on Dale because they're like, who would write a book called American Badass about themselves? He was on a game show, and there were some Korean contestants, and they nicknamed him that. So, yeah, not that Dale needs my protection. He's yeah. still an IJ guys. Come yeah. on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No, yeah, but it's these guys they called him like, oh, American Badass. So he just yeah, went. Yeah. It was like an inside joke. But um, uh, he, Dale remembers um, they were they were setting out like mines to tra track trap these guys that were like these snipers that were like firing on their position. So they went up into the mountains and set up these mines. And so the snipers started walking into it and blowing up. And so these Afghani guys, these Afghani snipers, one of the guys went and got all of his uh, kids and had them walk 10 feet in front of them to clear the mines. And none, and most of them, no, no, none of them hit it. One kid did, stepped on it, like blew his leg off and he bled out. And Dale's like, that was like, I laid that mine. He's like that, he's like, I still think about that. He's like, but then I think about that asshole that made his kids go out in front of him. And I remember shooting him in the face and that felt good. Um, but he was like, if I didn't lay those mines, that sniper could have blown my buddy's head off. And now someone back home doesn't have a dad. What do you do? Gray area. Um, JP Veriano, whose mom was a lunch lady at Pius, was one of my older brothers. Uh, yeah. <laughs> JP Veriano was my older brother, John's deceased brother, John's. He was one of his, if not his best friend. So it was Rob, the other guys on here a lot. JP uh, flew for the, flew drones for the air force he said that he was like a targeter he's like he definitely has some like ptsd from like targeting like groups of people mm. terrorists he goes it's also ptsd from like sometimes they're just surveilling and he's like i've watched women and children put against the wall and like shot watching mm. it through you know like it's all classified cameras because like we're watching from 10 miles away we're zooming in and we're seeing these people these like 12 year olds being shot because the Taliban's suspecting him. He goes, and those guys, he's like, you fucking hate, and you just want to like put a Hellfire missile up their ass. Um, they've all talked about um, Mike Durant. I mean, the Black Hawk Down guy. I mean, his story is intense. There's definitely, like, you, it's still a fact. You can definitely tell. But that guy was in captivity for 13 days. His friends were killed. He was, in the movie Black Hawk Down, he gets hit in the face with, like, a, a gun or something and breaks his face. Yeah. In his book, In the Company of Heroes, not the book Black Hawk Down, but his book, In the Company of Heroes, what that actually was, was the severed arm of a Delta Force operator that they beat him with. Holy fuck. And it broke his jaw and eye socket, and he still can't really talk about it. it which, if you'll notice, people have talked, asked me about my interview with Mike Durant. How come I don't talk about Black Hawk Down? Because I didn't want to, he's, he, I remember he emailed me afterward the next day and said, thank you for not making me the Black Hawk Down guy. 
Wow. Yeah. Because I was like, I don't want to make him the Black Hawk. So instead, we ta- I talked about the philosophy of it. He was in captivity, sure. and he talked about how every time he heard helicopters, his hope would well up. He'd be like, the Delta boys are coming to save me. I'm going to see my kid again. And then, like, they couldn't get close to him. And he goes, and I would feel so sad. So I started to tell myself, stop having hope. Just stop. And I remember that stuck out to me because I was like, I feel like what you would think was like, hang on to hope, hang on to that image of your child. Yeah. But it was the exact opposite. He goes, I survived because I just, I accepted that I was dead and I was never seeing my family again. Yeah. Obviously he's been back in the States for 27 years now. But yeah. so I did a whole episode based on that. Not, but point being is, is that was a completely unrelated tangent, but yeah, people that have killed, I mean, I guess in my mind, yeah, it was like a dramatic, like, oh man, this is going to be really intense. You can yeah, tell yeah, from yeah. some, it, what is like, like the cop, Lucero, like, right, right. doesn't want to kill you. Know, All cops are bastards. Like, no, fuck off. No, this guy didn't want to kill anyone. He hates it. Um, uh, yeah, other people, you can tell that they, that's, they weren't hoping to do that, but they knew it would be part like military. And then you have like the Delta Force guys where it's like, I don't want to like put them in a light of like, you know, they don't feel. You know, they're right. not human. No, these are emotional human guys who feel when it happens to a kid. Yeah. But they're also, these guys are alphas. These guys are tigers. These guys make right. Rogan look like a beta bitch. Like, right, these right. guys, these guys are the, you know, it's what did Andy Stumpf say about SEAL Team 6? When you're aiming, aim for above the teeth and below the eyes. That's how you sever the brain core. That's what these guys are. They get, they get that weak stomach that gets weeded out. <laughs> so right. these guys, yeah. It does, I don't think it puts them in a negative light. Like, oh, they don't feel anything. No, they do. But you can also tell it's like, I mean, these guys are hunters. <laughs> they're, they're, they're hunting. <laughs> it's a, yeah. Um, I can go for like five more minutes if you want. Um, it, uh, uh, five more minutes, bro. Just five more minutes. But, um, well, that's why I want the podcast to make money so I don't have to go to fucking work. So instead of saying five more minutes, it could be, you want to do another hour? Five hours? Five more hours? Uh, that's why I want the, that's why I want it to, but. Um, hey, man, you're getting close, bro. You can do it. Woo! But um, yeah, that's yeah. Some some is exactly what you think it is. The guys that are professionals, it's def- you're definitely like, whoa. They they just they don't even. They're like, oh yeah, no, I smoked them. You're just like, yeah. Sometimes when I'm like talking to Dale on here, I'm just like, I'll look. I just really he'll be talking. I'll be like looking, and you can go back to some episodes of me with him. Yeah, and I'll just be looking, and I'll be thinking like, this face is like the last face that a lot of people have seen. <laughs> Yeah, because some, some things people do, like whether it's like an art form or just something they've gone through, it's like so intense. But like, I mean, that's like the that's the pinnacle of it all is like having having witnessed murder or been a murderer, or like, you know, like person. almost person. all people you interact with will not have that experience. And yeah. so it, in some sense, they're in this rarefied air and you're just like, are you normal? Like, I feel like it would be like this bear that I have and I would kind yeah. of be like yeah. wanting to see. Yeah, but I would be scared too, you know, yeah. like. Yeah, one thing I've never done, I've never asked anyone. I've always right. let it come up organically. Right, I right. I found that. I'm like, don't ask. I think that's just like a that's general use the brain, don't ask. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, but you can you can definitely see it talking to Dale. Sometimes Dale will get fired up. He'll be like, mm. man, all these like, you know, protesters and shit. He'd be like, man, I'm fine for That's what I fight for. I fight for the Constitution. Like, you know, he's like, man, but any of these motherfuckers coming to my house, try to like, you know, take anything from my house or uh, threaten my family. It's like, I'll lay these motherfuckers down so quick. And, like, a lot of us say that and, like, a sort of talk a big game. Yeah, if any protesters come out, I'll fuck them up. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe I'll call the cops and just cry. But when you're looking at Dale talking, you're like, there's no – this isn't bluffing. Yeah. This is a, this is a statement of fact. Mm-hmm. If you threaten his family and, like, young daughter, like, rioting, you're going to have your brains put on a wall. <laughs> like, yeah. And uh, you can definitely tell. He's like, yeah. So I don't know to answer your question. Some are, yeah, it's more definitely tell like traumatic others. It's fucking business, man. You think if you didn't know who they are that you could detect anything or like all of them have it down where not all of them, but like, like you said, like, you know, I wonder if it was a different context. Like I wonder if I just met someone at like a McDonald's, oh, you shit. know, that had like killed someone. Like, would there be anything? I, it seems like it should be so profound that it would do that to you. But like, as humans, we're so malleable and we're so adaptable that I can also see it the other way. Like, no, like, you know, it's yeah, just something you stomach, just like everything else, just like a death of a family member or yeah. some traumatic shit that happened to you. Like we all have stuff like that. So it's the pinnacle of those things, 
but also I can see it being kind of similar. You know, it's it's very yeah. weird to think about. If it was like if I just had committed a murder, you'd probably be able to tell. My eyes would be dilated. I'd probably be like, yeah, right. You'd probably be like, I'm my life is over. I'm on the run now. Do I just kill myself and get rid of the anxiety? What am I doing? Yeah, yeah. You have like the psychopath, like who it's just there's nothing. There's nothing. It's empty inside. They just fucking ripped someone's face off and jerked off with their eye socket. Nothing, right? There's a sound bite. And then there are guys who, like military, they've, you know, they do feel, but it's like what Nixon said about Eisenhower. He said he never made an emotional decision. That does not mean that he was an emotionless man. That doesn't mean he was an emotionless man. Right. He was an emotional man. He loved his family, loved his country, he loved humanity. He made emotionless decisions because he right. had to. You don't set up the invasion of Normandy by going, right. ooh, it's going to be a big one. No. Yeah. That's how you, you, you kill Hitler. You yeah. fucking nuke Japan by looking at it coldly. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that they're like a, a heartless machine. I don't know. Yeah. If you, I don't know. But some of it, it's a dead giveaway. Like, if you didn't know who Dale was, but you saw Dale, like, you still see Dale and you're like, this guy is some guy. I don't know what. I don't know what. He's not a cop. This guy is Secret Service. This yeah. guy is, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know, man. Some of them, I've, I don't think I've ever met anyone that's like remorseless on this podcast. Even like Dale or Joe Ted, like you still see it in their face. They're like, look, like I don't, I don't want to kill anyone. No one right. does. If you do, you're a fucking psychopath. <laughs> it's um. No, I watched a documentary yesterday about this girl who like put a hit on her own parents. What the fuck? Like she had two people come into her, or I can't remember the number of people, but like basically come like murder her parents like in the night like while she was there. <laughs> Yeah, it was fucking like, tripping me out, man. That's, that's why I was like, I don't know why I've been thinking about murder a little that's recently. Unhinged. Like, that's unhinged, yeah, man. That's uh, that's crazy. But they cracked her in the interview. You know what I mean? They did the classic like police interrogation, like four hour long, uh, and they were able to. to, to, to like, she's in jail right now, so. Better to slip up. Um, yeah. Episode eighteen with Bruce Sackman, a special agent who uh, arrested, uh, hunted down, and arrested serial killing doctors in the U.S. Ooh. who would just ice their patients with like morphine or something. Go watch that episode, and he talks about it. God damn, that guy fucking went face to face with Satan. Because here He's are these, real life Dexter. Yeah, here are these real life guys, respectable doctors, you know, at bedside manner. Like, yeah, you know. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do this. We're yeah. Had kill counts in the seventies and eighties. Whoa. I don't even know if the Delta Force guys touched that. It's That's nuts, dude. And he said, and they didn't see a thing. And then once it finally came out that they were guilty, and they admitted, they would just be like, yeah, yeah, he got me. Nothing. Easy shit, bro. Nothing. I, we're gonna go for two more minutes. So, what are you gonna do with all the new newfound information? What are you gonna do with your channel, Major Third? You can't put out a new song every day. That's not realistic. You can't do that. Even I'm trying to think something. of different things. I want to maybe do not a podcast, but sort of a short do a um, podcast. And I will give you. I will be. I will. Any of my guests you want, I will fucking recommend you to that. Recommend. It's gonna be like more hip hop based. I'm hoping to like what I want to do is talk about old albums that I like, and then also connect with other artists and basically talk about like the writing process uh, and like, okay. how do you make your bars and like what inspired you? So I think I could keep it pretty niche in that way. Um, I mean, I don't even have like a microphone yet, but like, I'm just trying to think of, you know, this I fucking- I didn't have a microphone until episode 50. Oh, really? Yeah. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll hit you up. I was thinking on multiple times through this episode, like there's different things I'm going to ask Tommy about. I might ask you to Photoshop something one yeah. day. I might ask you about yeah. what's your advice on the microphone. What's a yeah. yada, yada, yada. Yeah. So I, I'll, can, I can walk you through my, yeah. Uh, episode 123. It's, it's like 20 minutes long. I did a podcast yeah. tutorial. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's sweet. That is, that is the culmination of all my knowledge. So anything you ask for me, I mean, yeah, you and I can talk another time. I can tell you about like how, how you like, like anonymously like sneakily like plug your shit online to try to like drive traffic and it doesn't really work it kind of works it's um dude just start put up your first video today even if you just put up a video of you talking what to me I, I i want to become fuck you that is the attitude. that's the attitude what, no listen because it's gonna kill you that's the attitude that's gonna kill you what you said was so inspirational that i'm gonna apply it in other places that aren't quite that way i gotta get my shit right before i start oh that's you're like, like no you don't have to but like that's I'm the wrong mindset that's, that's the wrong people. mindset that's the wrong mindset who was that it's McClellan? not the wrong mindset because i'm who's that general mcclellan who's mcclellan that abraham lincoln had to let go because i'm gonna really kick it in his ass but right? not quite in the way you're envisioning that's, well then you're not gonna kick ass you have to do it today you have to do it today don't wait just start get your first episode out let it suck dick make it four minutes long Make it seriously. Make it to it right now. Put it up. 
this can be your first episode. I'll send you this fucking file. I'll put it on Google Drive. No, shut up. You're going to do it and just put it up. And yes, refine it and master it and get your shit together. But do it while you're doing everything else. This is what I'm doing, bro. Okay. Okay. You're trying to crack a wormhole. I get it. Then do a video of that. Do a 30 second video. Yeah, maybe. But that's what I'm saying. Like, I'm going to take what you say and apply it. But it's going to be like, I have to. For you to truly apply it, you have to put up a video today. Because everything else is just theory. You have to do it today. Put up a video. Just put up a put up anything. Do a video of you just beatboxing for thirty seconds. I did that for a while, right? With my rap Instagram, I did a a a post every day for like whatever it was, three months, and it was exactly like you said, bro. It was it was draining me. I over. Yeah, just do something. Just put up something. That's the biggest thing is putting up because all else is theory. No, but I did that for too long. What I'm saying is you have to like accept that I'm in the phase you were in where you were doing the studying for like all the days in the library, like. Like, that's where I was with the rap thing. I'm still recovering. Okay. You got to trust me, man. I promise, like, I'm taking what you're saying to heart, and I believe in what you're saying, and I might have to poke you a little bit and get you to give me some of this tough love. But in this moment, it's already sufficient. I already feel like I even might listen to this again. Like, I really feel like you're like the accidental guru. And uh, this time thing that I always have hated, I'm going to start twisting it, and I'm going to start using it to my advantage. So you should go, you should, what you should do is you should listen to this again. That's another thing is it took me, like, 50 episodes of listening to my own podcast to get like my feedback that you finally start l- hearing through the hatred of your own voice yeah, I think and you start listening to the content. It takes like 50 episodes of being like, I am a moron. I'm a piece of shit. I should have been aborted. Now I can listen to it. <laughs> now I can listen to it and I get, I can just like see through it. I'm like, okay, interrupt less. Still can't do that. I'm like, okay, do this. Train of thoughts here. Um, do that. But what I also recommend for you to do is go back and listen to I would get the episodes you and I did and put them in chronological order and listen to them and just yeah. because only you will see things in there that will be like oh yeah I, that's I was doing that yeah. look back and see how long it's been and be like I could be at my own episode 100 that's <laughs> do that man go back and look at those episodes and realize that today is today and then we're gonna do another episode one day and this is just gonna be in the past just yeah. so I have something to show for it Trey yeah. Carney podcast TPC hey. you can do TPC man. Yeah, Wait, yeah, no, no, yeah see, podcast. Everyone, uh, check out my Instagram, Major Third Hip Hop. Go I listen to my it. music. I will link it. I'll put it on there and your YouTube channel. That's Just it, start, man. Just start. Just start putting out content. It's it's a it's a you're only gonna learn how to put out good shit after you've been doing it for a while. You just have yeah. to. And that's a cool thing today, bro. What? I got school too. I, I was just thinking about like I was, so many things I want to do. I was like, I got to go to class soon. Like, yeah. I gotta- well, exactly. So choose a small thing that you know you can do every day. Yeah, yeah, exactly. One minute video. Bro, you're, you're an inspiration, bro. You're an inspiration. Woo! This shit's going to work. Yeah, and it better inspire because look, I, I got to go work at a bottle shop now. I got I to go. So 30 years old, the working at a bottle shop above my parents' garage. Hope to look back at this when, uh, when I get my 100 milli Spotify contract. Oh, yeah. okay. All right, Trey. Much love, buddy. Hey, that was fun, bro. That was really fun. Tell me you love me. I love you, bro. I'll see you uh, next time we do this. All right, man. We'll do. Yes. And dude, start. Start. I'm going to start something. I sure. will. I am. This is a threat. I will rape you. If you I do. will come to your house. To the bank. Penetrate you. I will okay. save up all of my money to fly to Hawaii, smoke some meth, and rape you. Whoa. I like how you threw that they, last they, one. It made it more believable. Like, that would be the thing you would do if you're going to rape that. someone. I would you do that. I would, get right, the, dog. I would get the Delta Force guys to do it with me. It would be, this is just a whole legal, I'm just going to, peace. Yeah. We'll leave it there. <laughs> Later, buddy.